Hello everyone, this is Douglas coming to you from Cape Town and today we're speaking to Pete in Milwaukee and what it's 8 o'clock in the morning for you Pete and 4 a.m. 4, 4 p.m. in the <laughs> afternoon for me in Cape Town. Good morning. You're a little upside down. <laughs> Always. Yeah. How are you doing Pete? I'm doing really well. Yeah. Uh, it's, uh, it, it's a curious time for this whole world and uh, much of what activation uh, some of the foundation of activation has uh, the um, what's the word I'm looking for the the unfair advantage that be activated practitioners have in this time is the ability to um, shift our point of focus and oddly enough for me COVID has been a huge blessing it's been difficult but it's it's brought um it's highlighted that for someone who trends toward you know the introverted extroverted spectrum i'm trend toward introverted it's been really awesome i really like my wife and my kids are adulting and i go to pete's world at my gym and i enjoy the staff and the people there and i go to a grocery store and that's kind of it <laughs> so <laughs> Dude, COVID's dude, been that, good. That, that actually sounds awesome. You know, it, it, it kind of <laughs> reminds me a bit of um, when, when I chatted to Christopher in Denmark. He, he said, you know, it wasn't 20 years ago where life was simpler. It was almost like yeah. you were at home, you were with your family, you were with your friends, you went to work, you came home. That was it. Now it's this mess of, of, of chaos, there's of, of massive demand. And um, uh, so I think it sounds awesome that you just go, actually, actually this Pete's found his place. Fantastic. Yeah, I, I look forward. What, what, I, what I am missing right now is physical adventure. Mm. Like I want to go places. I, <laughs> yeah. you know, so, so I miss that. But I do know that that is coming. And uh, there's a lot of focus to... Uh, and do what you're doing right now with be activated which is this is an opportunity to do what you've probably needed to do for a long time which is get the word out um because we, we can help more people whether it's my strength training business and activation or whether it's you driving activation um we're here on this planet to help and this planet needs connection and help absolutely you know and i, and I think it's it, it's kind of as much as you are being an introvert you you and i have actually started the same journey which is getting mm -hmm. onto social media getting more um visible almost while being at home and mm -hmm. it's it, it, you know it, and and the reason is is because it's important because there is a message and there is and and for people to know that there is something that they can do differently that can make a difference you know, and I think I think that's that's the big thing. Um, you know, from just just from an outside perspective, I actually told myself, asked myself to not go here, but I can't help it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how many weeks after the election it is right now. What day are we? We are. I don't. I don't either. <laughs> it's like, dude, it's like I everywhere else in the world, you have an election. The votes get counted someone wins someone loses boohoo goodbye um but somehow you guys have a trend because i'd love to say this is the first time but 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 then you look into history it's not you know it's yeah you you may know more about that history than i do for me at the at least at the top of the ticket from a presidential standpoint this is the first time i'm aware of this much uh, public dysfunction with counting votes and how votes were tabulated and how we received votes and um, yeah yeah I, 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 no I think it was um, I'm trying I'm actually forgetting what the guys oh, name it was when when George W Bush got in yeah 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 you are and, and that pales in comparison to this who who was the guy that just lost by it was Al Gore Al and Gore. Um, George I, I was, Bush and there was. There was hanging chads and dangling chads and pregnant chads in, in Florida. There was all this stuff. No, no, it was but, bizarre. But but I've got to say that um, yeah. 
I, I was in LA oh, 2017 and he spoke um, at, the, yeah. at the at the three day conference Summit. I was at. He was one yep. of the speakers. What an amazing speaker. What an amazing, yeah. you know, so so whether he would have made a great president or not, I have no idea. But 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 compelling and 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 you know that that's actually what so I kind of went, hey, dude, you look like a leader. So I'm actually leading into something here. Um, yeah. Ha ha ha. Um, <laughs> actually, the other, the other guy who, who the following year was there, who was seriously impressive, and I was seriously disappointed that he didn't run, was the ex CEO of Starbucks. Yes, Howard Schultz would Howard. have been interesting. Um, yep. He where were? Uh, I wish I could remember the big theater. There were probably about. 6,000 people there listening to him and, and this, yeah. and, and I want to say this kid having a conversation and the, the mutual respect and the ability to have the conversation between the two of them <laughs> was insane because it's like, it wasn't like he had a speech, he had a way, he had a conversation like we're doing. And, yeah. and we, we got <laughs> to sit there and watch um, at the morph. You cracky mob. LA was obviously weird for me. Uh, it, uh, Morpheus Theater. No, not that. Morpheus oh. is not is from the Matrix. <laughs> it's so from Matrix, like which is where I'm feeling like we are right now. <laughs> <laughs> so, so where I was going to Pete? Sorry, yeah. leadership. Yes. So, so, so that's a big thing in your world. Yeah, I, I would. If the simple definition of leadership or a leader is. I like the simple definition that a leader has influence. Um, so therefore, we all can step into a leadership role. We all, um, I'm stopping short of saying should, but I'll say should. We should be stepping into a leadership role because we all have influence. And um, so, yeah, le leadership like is... there for leadership and responsibility, almost like a social responsibility, if you like, go hand in hand. Wow. <laughs> Agreed. Uh, completely. Because um, if you don't like the word leader, oh, I don't, I'm, I'm not a leader. Well, do you believe in being socially responsible that, that, that you need a level of accountability for what you bring to society? And if the answer yeah. is awesome, then you are a leader. You are a leader. And, and whether we, you know, we could wordsmith this and play with it, but whether it's accountability or please understand that your actions have consequences and they have influence. So are you going to own, uh, you don't have to own the consequences, but maybe being aware of what your actions do and how they influence others. Now others have a responsibility as well. They need to meet that, you know, that action with a reaction yeah, and yeah. that's their choice. Nice. Uh, so, <laughs> so here we are, we're leaders. Yeah. So, and, 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 and the reason why it's such, it's such a big thing is because, you know, for all, all the, the craziness going on in the world, you know, we've got a presidential race where the leaders have lost their heads. You know, I, I don't know, they woke up one day, someone stole their brains and we don't know what the hell's going on, but unfortunately we gave them a level of power to let them do this. But, yes. but this, the same, the same thing in the crisis is it seems that leaders are making appointed leaders let's let's differentiate i'm, I'm mm -hmm. making like really odd like survivalist based decisions and 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 that's the conversation we've had a lot that you know about leaders in good places in their bodies make better decisions and so we we've had conversation lots of conversations around this and and when i was in milwaukee with you we we met with some of your top community leaders some amazing guys mm -hmm. doing amazing work but and and from a place of you know here i am which you help them with you you help them connect in with themselves in your gym in mm -hmm. in but in their bodies so that they then can almost walk the talk it's it's an interesting comment because you, you, you we're talking about being simple, two different things. We're talking about these appointed leaders that the electorate, and it's hyper-focused here in the United States right now, who we have, our government is who we put in there. 
And, and people at some point need to go, dude, if you don't like what's going on, it's a big, and we've been kicking that can down the road in a lazy fashion for a long time. This is what we have. Um, and then we're talking about community and business leaders. Mm. And part of the differentiation I see when it comes to leadership, at least here in the United States, what I see so much of with our government officials is that they make leadership decisions based on election cycles, which inherently are two to four years most often. They are not making decisions. So they're making, they are not servant leaders per se, and I'm being very broad, but they are leading to cover and um, to cover their own ass and get reelected in two years rather than looking at the bigger picture of what would be best, not only for America, but for the world, how can we function? Now, community leaders and business leaders have some of that, but they tend to have a longer game. They understand that, you know, there's more to this thing. And our politicians right now are making snap decisions like we saw with I think that's a very the reactionary. You know, your your business leaders and your community leaders realize that we can do a short term gain right here, right now. But if but if that messes with the long game, then it's then we don't do it. Whereas if your right. cycles are shorter and so your long game is only two years, well, you know, we 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 had it um, quite like in in South Africa, the, the whole lot of. Um, high positions being shifted and, and, and somebody comes in and they given a task to make this huge, um, I'm trying to think, what, like, like actually this, this, the Cape Town Harbor was a great example. Um, the person put in charge was put on a bonus system of if they could make profit and which they did, how do they make profit? These ginormous cranes that unload the ships, let's say they're 10, they sold eight. They, the profits were through the roof. Except now, there are all these ships out in Table Bay Harbor waiting to come in because they're two frigging cranes. Yeah. And more importantly, because Cape Town couldn't then um, cope with, with the amount of traffic coming in the way they used to, those, those ships now, a whole lot of them, go up to Durban Harbor. Mm. But someone was incentivized with a bonus based upon profit. And they did, they, they went out and they did what their contract said. But because they knew they could leave after two years, made no right. difference to them. And then the person who comes in next looks like they're useless and have absolutely no idea what they're doing. I, I, I don't know if you've seen this in, in, in teams and that you've watched and worked with, I have where someone yeah. comes in, almost sucks the life out of it, yeah. look, keeps it good, keeps it good, leaves, and then everything falls apart. And everyone goes, oh, it's the new coach. It's no, 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 no. It's, it was the system was broken and it just <laughs> hadn't, fought, the horse hadn't died yet. <laughs> it was about to die. And then you hand it over the reins and say, hey, buddy, this is yours. And you go, uh, it's dead. Ah, you killed the horse, man. And, and can we, as people or since we're kind of playing with politics, can we as an electorate step back, pause enough to go, we tend to in a very uh, simplistic way, give all of the credit or all of the, um, the fault to who, whatever administration's in charge. And it's much more complicated. It's just so much more complicated. Yeah, but, but, but I think also on like a, a physiological level, there's this, this time around, it seems that everyone's far more emotionally vested, you know, and, 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 and I've been quite amazed in, in South Africa, in my circle of friends, having a conversation around a fire and suddenly the US elections come up and somebody expresses an opinion that somebody else doesn't mm -hmm. agree with. And mm -hmm. suddenly, hell, we, we, we could be sitting at a, in Milwaukee around a right. fire as though it was though our country and I like I had a like a very good friend of mine who absolutely went off for half an hour and we were just sitting there going go, you go boy wow and, and it's like it's not even our country 
and, yeah, that's, and I'm, so I'm, that's I'm, fascinating. I'm amazed by the the intensity of the emotions that seem to have been stoked up, and 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 may, and maybe that's on the backdrop of COVID and and all of the the frustrations and the the the, the craziness. Um, you know, it, it it's like the repressed stuff comes up. I, I don't know, but but I've I've just been amazed by the intensity of the emotions that I've heard around it. Yeah, so sometimes those intensities of emotions can be attributed to something that is um, less intimate, i.e. American politics, rather than talking about what might be way too intimate of a topic that's really bothering him. Yeah, you know, I, it's just, um, it's just but, a, an outlet that people go, oh, it's that, and, and nobody yeah. asks anymore. It's, it's interesting to me, I, I do appreciate um, the role I have a greater appreciation today, I think, watching this take place and hearing from, um, I'm, I'm connected to more people around the world since getting involved in Be Activated, um, which is a huge blessing. So I'm a bit more aware of America's role in this world. Um, I had the benefit of not really thinking much about it, uh, you know, prior, and especially this year. So, um, America, I, I posted something pertaining to this, and I've been thinking about it a fair amount. You know, we started talking about leadership. I would think most people would suggest that a servant leader, somebody who has a very healthy ego, yet has been able to manage the arrogance that sometimes can come along, that is actually able to serve, lead, direct, is a really good thing. And I believe America the, and the world, therefore, would benefit much from some humility from our country. There's well, well way, 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 way back when uh, the Greek philosopher Plato, his his philosophy of leadership was the philosopher kings, and the philosopher yeah. king, when you became king, you had zero ownership of anything, which meant. It was in your highest interest to be recognized as a great leader who made great decisions versus a leader who made decisions that benefited your bottom line. Yeah. And, and, and I, I remember in my first year of university learning about that. And, and that has always intrigued me and gone, where are those? Why, why, why was that just one of those philosophies that was thrown out and is spoken about? But 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 we could never put it in place, you know. And and, and this is worldwide. It's you know, there's we we have we have things unraveling in South Africa, um, you know, so so much horrendous corruption, um, just just on the 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 packages that were there to help people who were in poverty and starving, and 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 and, and food packages that were going there. Someone just stepped in the way and said, you know what? I have the power and influence. I'm going to direct it that way where someone will buy it from me. Whereas we were giving it to those people. Those people got nothing, as in they were starving. And I, I always go, wow, how, how is that? But that there's somehow in, in our um, leadership and power, you know, it's, it's, just, it, it's, it, it, it's just an uncomfortable conversation because there's a lot of, a, a lot of uncomfortable stuff is being exposed at the moment in the world. And it, it, it's, you know, it's one thing to focus in and find, you've got to find, like if we're working with the client, we've, we've got to find the crap. We've got to find where the problems are, we identify them. But then we also have to map out where are we going, a better way. You've got to, you've got to focus on where you want to go. You know, it's, it's the rule of surfing. Where you look is where you go. If, if someone's struggling with, to, to do a turn, guaranteed their head's always in the wrong position. So you take your head that way. And if I do that, I'm going to do a cutback. So I'm going, my, my whole body is going to follow where I look. And, and, and this rule is in, in anything. It's goal setting. It's all of those things. You know, if, if I said, hey, Pete, I'm in Cape Town. How do I get to Milwaukee? And you said, well, Doug, let's not have you go to Australia first. And probably not Indonesia either. Uh, don't go by China. I'm like, oh, dude, that's awesome. But I still have, I'm still know nothing more 
about <laughs> how to get to Milwaukee. And so it, it's, it's, it, it's kind of where you look is where you go. And, and if we, you know, you, you brought up earlier about the point of focus, be activated helps us recognize and realize how important point of focus is. Yeah, it, are, are you only looking at the chaos, the noise, the, and, and it's almost then they always win, whoever they are because now you're looking where they want you to look where do you want to be looking where do you want to be going agreed and um uh, you know simply stated here in america right now we we have a two-party system um the possibility of a third party or another option is um uh, not really there I, america right now is pretty much 50 percent. we're half and half oh uh, yeah, yeah and and, and, and for me, the, the cynical side of me is our government has us right where they want us because we are divided and therefore we can be more easily manipulated to march this way, march that way, do this, do that. And to your point- So, so that, that sounds like quite inflammatory, that's Tom. And, and, I, and I want you to tell me how does that translate onto the streets, into the communities that you work with? It, it's not dissimilar to your conversation around a fire with somebody that doesn't have a horse in the race here in America is very inflamed and angry about American politics. Yeah. Um, how it's translated on the street, it, it can be as simple as those that wear masks when they're out on the street and those that don't. Um, and the looks that you might get being out in nature without a mask on, and but those that do. And it can be Milwaukee, as you are well aware too, well, I'll try not to dive down too many rabbit holes here, but Milwaukee is arguably the most segregated city in America. We have had that reputation for a long time. And, 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 so, and, so, and, and I think, Pete, it's an important part of the conversation is that that's one of the reasons we started our conversation. I did training at your place because we, we didn't just go to do training. It was, right. you know, it, it, it was, it was to meet with the community leaders to see what's going on, because where I'm from in South Africa, we have massive problems. And yeah. I sit here feeling quite overwhelmed with a, with a sense of an inability to add any value. And, and you know, all of us, I'm, I'm just framing it. And so the reason I came to you and to Milwaukee was to see if outside of the environment that I live where there seems to be a common problem is there a way to find an answer that would help what you guys are doing and then also would translate back into south africa and that was our goal it, or, or that yeah. was the the idea that drove it yeah and I, and that is still in process hmm. you know it's it's a good journey and back to you know point of focus if we allow ourselves to fixate on what the news is telling us, what is happening in Washington and all that, um, where be activated and leadership and a, you know, servant leader, which I would argue requires a parasympathetic belly breathing leader. Um, can we convert uh, we, our point we of also focus? Has enough power in their butt to actually stand their ground when things get uncomfortable. Yes. And, and can we have our point of focus be I can, ha I have quite a bit of influence in my family, um, less now that the kids are out and about doing their adult thing, but we still have influence. I have influence at my place of work. And then it starts to diminish pretty rapidly outside of that. So when we are distracted and we displace our anger, our disappointment, um, shame, guilt, whatever emotion you want to throw in, and we displace it and blame the government and we blame politics and we don't pause and go, they matter, but they really don't matter. Let, let's actually be honest about what we need to, what we can accomplish in our family, in our business. And guess what? If we all manage the chaos in our family and our business, yes. government becomes a bit more irrelevant which is where they need to be regulated, <laughs> relegated. <laughs> yeah, no, no, but, How's that for inflammatory? No, no, but, but, but you see, I think that's awesome because, because the thing is it's, it's and, and it almost, it's, we're not just talking government. We, we're talking anything that pulls you out of yourself, that, 
that 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 actually stops you managing you and the world around you. You know, Steve, Stephen Covey um, in Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, his his habit about being proactive or reactive all was centered around your circle of influence. And it basically said, here's your world. This is everything in your world. The stuff you can control, the stuff you can't control. This inner circle is the stuff that you can control. The outer circle is the stuff that you can't control. If you put your focus on the stuff that you can't control, the stuff that you can control gets smaller and smaller. You know, I, I, I always think about um, from Aladdin, where with the genie, you know, with Robin Williams as the genie, invincible cosmic power, itty bitty living space. And the thing is, <laughs> the more you focus on the powers out there, the smaller your living space becomes, the more imploded, collapsed. And then you're going, wow, I'm actually powerless. I can do anything, but yet I'm powerless. Until somebody else, which is <laughs> rubs my lamp, we call that activating. Um, <laughs> That's good. <laughs> I'm going to work with that one. That's good. You need to, can we pause and just need to write that down? Um, but, you know, your point brings me back to kind of where we started, which is arguably from the outside looking in, my world is relatively small right now in many people's impressions. I am here in Heartland, Wisconsin, outside of Milwaukee. I go to a grocery store and I go to my shop. But my world feels very rich and very fulfilling awesome. uh, right now, because uh, why? Because it is, <laughs> but it's, 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 it's a choice. I, well, well, I think that's a big thing because it's a choice. And it's almost because I said so, not because you said my life looks rich, but because I feel my life is rich. That's awesome. This life would not look real rich to a lot of people, but I don't care. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> you know, it's, <laughs> it's a good listen, thing. Listen, listen so it's, while we stay in the theme of, of the US, you know, in what yeah. was 2008, 2009, I spent a lot of time in the US and part of my clientele was the Billionaires Club. And there's some lovely people there and there's some very good people there. But there yeah. were also a huge amount of seriously unhappy people there. And it very, very quickly put me on a track of, understanding very quickly that money is not going to buy you great joy, love, happiness. It, 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 it's, it's because, you know, like, and, and going to Indonesia, uh, it, when, when, when I would train in Indonesia and then go to Bali, there are people there that live, their families are fed on a dollar and a half a day. That's what they need. But yet the joy and the happiness was tangible was crazy and they had nothing you know and 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 so it it, it it's it, it it's some somewhere along the way you've got to get to the point of what is it that floats your boat what is it mm -hmm. that, that says my life is rich i'm good with this not uh, i'm good with this is that okay everybody you know it's it, it's actually i'm good with this full stop well and and of course, um, as we are leveraging social media for good, there's a whole lot of leveraging of social media because people are focused on everybody living a highlight reel, you know, so therefore they never have enough because somebody else has got a sparkly, wonderful, incredible life, incredible boyfriend, incredible family, incredible vacations because of this digital thing. <laughs> I know, and I, I don't. It's you true. don't. Yeah, I feel so superior right now talking to you. <laughs> my life is so rich. Oh, Doug, funny. No, but but you know the, the the thing is that I and 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 I actually I love I love the choice of word. Actually, my life is rich. It's very different to my life is good or perfect or because if if rich has a has like a a texture to it. it yeah, I, I'm, exactly. I'm interpreting it through my my filters, nope. but as a texture, texture is the word. So, so 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 therefore, you're not actually saying it's perfect. It's always good. It's mm -hmm. rich. It's oh. I can, it, it, it's like sticking your hands into beautiful soil, and and you know, and every now and again, you hit like a bug or a slug yeah. or a, and. Ugh. 
but but it's just yeah nourishing yes i i mean if, if people that know me intimately that know the journey over the last three years and what we've gone through in a family what we've gone through in the business um what, what spiritual you, what, what journeys you mean like go build a whole new shop and <laughs> as you open it COVID comes you mean like yeah. that imagine that happened yeah it, it, most of the um online gurus right now are suggesting that people take big bets on brick and mortar <laughs> <laughs> sarcasm <laughs> yeah it, it the, the last three years have been um have been rich they've been textured there's been a lot of beautiful deep emotions and you know that's that's the juice of life For it sure. is um it's been something so so i have i have two two pictures and two stories i i want to run by you the first was when you got on a plane and came to london Mm -hmm. I appreciate it. Um, and uh, we were doing level two. And uh, you were sitting, I believe, next, were you sitting, you were sitting in front of Gloria. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And um, when we did our check-in, um, was she in front of you? I'm trying, but, but whatever she happened, was sitting, you guys had she had was a sitting right behind me. Yeah, you guys had had this long conversation before the workshop had begun. Right. And then when you did your check-in to say hello to everyone, you gave about nothing. And yep. so I then asked you a question. So instead of saying, well, Pete, give us more, I said, so tell me a bit about Gloria. And you literally ran through her family history. <laughs> you I remember right that? <laughs> of course I do. <laughs> <laughs> she was like sitting there beaming you know it's from the house of windrush don't you know <laughs> oh well she she will love hearing that you still remember that but oh, oh, I, how can you forget gloria anyway continue <laughs> <laughs> but but you you know actually we, we need to we do need to talk about her actually because she was doing some amazing stuff um, but but what was so, was so important there, and that, that was that was why in your story you you said Doug called me the invisible man, because you right. did have you a strategy and a skill set that you had, is you found a way to not be seen, you know. Yet mm -hmm. you this rather handsome gentleman that everyone can see, but yet you you were an illusion, and somehow you managed mm -hmm. to make it entirely about the other person. So almost to the point of flattery where they didn't notice that they knew sweet fuck all about you. And it was quite, <laughs> it was quite amazing. Yeah. And, and, and when Gloria realized she was like, oh, oh my God, well, he's, he's from the US. His name's Pete. And, and that was, that was, that was quite a thing. The, the thing, well, there are a few things about Gloria that, you know, she was she was gonna she was desperately just wanted to go and fight with someone, uh, and that means yeah. in the boxing ring for everyone. And um, she right. had, she had just found her someone who was willing to fight her. That was what that that was one. But but the bigger thing is, Gloria um, lives in a community that was struggling, and mm -hmm. one of the things one of the rules that we not rules one one of the principles would be don't give it away for free you devalue mm -hmm. it you devalue it for the work for yourself and you devalue it for your client and she had been going no but i've got it my my community can't afford to pay me anything so i said well barter and so i i remember her when 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 we chatted about this saying listen it's so cool now how the community community people coming together to find a way I work on them and someone will arrive with bags of shopping. I don't need all right. those bags of shopping. So I'll take what I need and I'll take two bags to the family next door. There are five kids there. They, they don't have yeah. enough food and those kids come and mow my grass. Did you know I've got three TVs in my garage because people rock up with a TV, their TV, because people 
want to give you something for the value that you give them. Absolutely. Then it's a fair exchange. Like charity, when, when I give to you and you just say, oh, thank you, is a diminishing system. Yeah, it, it's something there's something. Somebody has to stand above and somebody has to stand below. But but if right. we can do an exchange, and I'm thinking like I, as usual, I'm just speaking and it's coming because and as we do an exchange, both people get value from it. And that, yeah, that is why the principle of the and both work, people get dignity. There's dignity in the exchange. There's value yeah. you and, know, and, of the two people. Yeah. So I I, I could just see how how powerful. Gloria becomes in her community on on just raising the baseline of where people are at. Just just on something simple of saying, I have something that will help you. You want it, but you have to give me something. It doesn't matter what. I'm not counting. I'm not. But but there's an exchange and it's it, it's a it's a big deal. You know, and I think there is too much in the world of give me this. I want that. And there is no exchange. So that's, that's the first story. And the, and the other one, and, 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 and I'm, you know, it, it, these days we're so, so politically, politically correct. And, and, I, and I have to say it just, you know, because Gloria is laughing at me now because she can see, hey, <laughs> the white African is looking uncomfortable. Gloria is this big, taller than me, beautiful black woman who, if she punched me, would knock the lights out of me because her glutes are so friggin' powerful now, <laughs> you know, and, 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 and is an amazing inspiration. But, yeah. but you, you in your community with the division, you, you have a, um, a minister, Mick. Yeah, Mick. Uh, that, that, yes. that, that when we were there and we were meeting with the community leaders, so th these are guys who are at the top of the rung, um, yes. And, and Mick, I don't know how you guys ever connected, but, but he, he and his wife, they bought a church and they turned. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Sorry. How did you meet Mick? Well, I, I don't recall, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, it's, you're asking me what should be a simple question. How did I meet Mick? All right. Well, I, you well know, then, it, then it's, then it, then it's, then it's purely divine intervention so some there's some of that going on owns you and says hey pete i need your help you say awesome can doug and i come and and, and chat to you yeah how's that there's the, the, the yeah the, yeah I, I mean so to kind of paint the picture we um because of the theme of i thought having you come in and teach it might be a really interesting conversation to to take a look at some important time periods and figures meaning let's look at Nelson Mandela and Dr. Martin Luther King. Let's look at Jim Crow in the United States and let's look at apartheid. Um, what, is, what is some commonality from distant parts of the globe and what can we learn from each other? So we had an evening that we met with quite a mixture of people, um, three, four, four black um, business leaders, community leaders, people with a lot of influence, not only in Milwaukee, but nationally. Yep. And then um, a future politician, um, an attorney, and then you and I, I think. And then, so that was one end of the spectrum to talk about that. Then we went to arguably the most, one of the most dangerous and um, a difficult area code, zip codes in America is this 53206 zip code, which is where Mick's church is at. So, so, so I, here's I'm, two. I'm, I'm going to give, like, I'm going to ruin the movie, but we're still going to yeah, ruin the movie. <laughs> because when we were leaving, I don't know if you remember <laughs> this, when we were leaving, we were walking to your car and suddenly Mick comes running out and grabs up and says, guys, don't go. And we were like, and there were what, five or six guys standing yeah. to... And he goes, I need to introduce you to some of the community. Yes. <laughs> and we're like, okay. And basically what he was doing is he was introducing us to the gangsters. And 
there, there was the one guy whose head was all bandaged because the night before someone had yeah. attacked him with a bottle and smashed his head. There was the yeah. other guy with the colostomy bag hanging yes. out and, and, and basically asking if he could come and train at your gym. And, mm -hmm. and I loved, you see, because you and I were so far out of our depth, we had no clue. But that's what I just, so don't, don't think anyone that we knew what we were doing or where we actually were. Uh, but Mick was our savior here. And basically, he was like, hey, this is, this is Pete. He is a gym in Milwaukee. This is Doug. He's from Africa and he's white. And, and, and he, what, what they were making sure, what he told us afterwards is basically, we were the first two white guys really to come into that area in about 10 years, which meant that's well, his words, not ours. So we could only have been police. And the fact that we were in his right. church for at least an hour means he was informing, which means the chances were right. they would burn down his church. Yeah, there'd be, be And we there. were driving away going, holy crap. You know, you assume that what you see was a beautiful sunny day, all of that, and beautiful church and and... But that was the background of the environment that we were in and going in with open hearts. And maybe that's why we got out quite safely. Um, but, but well, and, and I, I'm going to remind you of another thing that Mick told us as we were leaving, which to the, obviously it had an impact because I'm still bringing it up. But he said, you know, when white people come into this neighborhood, they often think they're police. So that was the introduction. He wanted to make sure that he wants to continue having influence in that neighborhood and he can't have influence if the neighborhood thinks that he's an informant. Um, and number two, he said, white people don't need to be very afraid because there's no way any black person is going to shoot or harm one of you because they know all hell will come down on them because the police will come. Now, if they kill another black man or woman in that neighborhood, that's not as big of a deal. And I've got goosebumps right now because it's oh, so I, that, sad. That makes me sad. I don't get tears. I get tears. Yeah, yeah. What about that? You're right. But but Mick and his wife were doing something amazing. Um, yeah. And that's that's why we were there because you told me that that they had um, on the top floor got some funding together, built, put a basketball court on the top, and yeah. they had a feeding yep. scheme and a place for the kids yep. to play safely. Yep. They literally had. Yes metal detectors as in when you walked in no guns no knives no because yep. this is the environment they're in and over time they got caught up in almost like doing all the right things with with good people with good intentions coming in to help but putting all the bureaucracy in the way which meant that right. mick and his wife had got lost in the system and it, and and they yeah. weren't doing what they had set up they what which was he, he had a business that yeah. created money that's how they did it and then they yep. started this thing and then they stopped the business because people came in to fund and help with right. love great intent but then they got lost along the way which is like mm. like lost souls we all get lost and so for me the gift was having a conversation with Mick as an outsider with nothing, nothing. I'm leaving here in five days time and, and doing what we do in activation. Cause, because, you know, it, it's, it's, um, it, 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 it's, you got to watch a no touch activation mm -hmm. other than the hug at the end. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and what it, what, what it was, was about, seeing what this beautiful man was doing and creating and that he'd got lost. So he was no longer doing it. And they, they were at the point where they were on their last, whatever, $200. Yeah. And there was right. what meant they couldn't pay for this. They couldn't feed kids. And, and, and within that horrible environment, the, these were kids whose, whose fathers were probably dead in, in, in gang related violence. And the moms were, drugged up and all of that 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 was the reality of 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 who the kids were that were and he was creating a safe place that that was and that's 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 what was is so powerful he was his 
he realized him and his wife realized and i didn't i didn't meet her because she wasn't there so i can't even right. I didn't, um but but they were creating a safe haven in order for kids to thrive and you know, feed them because you know I, as i said i've drawn over here maslow's hierarchy because you know food shelter warmth all of that's there safety is there that's the the he, he's meeting their base needs so they can get into the next levels you can't get into the next levels of of right. connecting and belonging unless you've got your base levels met and he was doing an amazing or they'd create an amazing environment but they'd got lost mm -hmm. along the way and and all it was was hearing where he was at and asking him questions that he could answer i couldn't answer you couldn't answer and and as we worked he just got clearer and clearer what he needed to do mm -hmm. in order to like launch it again and it was just it, it, like in that moment of so you know so what you're saying is all you need right now for this to become real again like this is this thing he goes yeah that's all i need awesome we can do that for you Poof, done mm -hmm. okay so if that's your only objection it's already sorted for, for for me that was just it it, it it's I, I i've been doing a lot of writing i'm writing a book for everyone noticed. <laughs> <laughs> and um it's it, it it's uh so it's really got me thinking and it's got and and the thing is when we're imploding when we're collapsing when we're defending all we see is our limitations all we see is the reasons why we can't do things mm -hmm. when we can drop back in and and really feel what the that thing is the fear the the, the doubt the hesitation and we can feel it and 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 not have to diminish ourselves because of it to own it then we can do something with it and then suddenly we we're looking at opportunities so the one is where we look we, we're actually seeking limitations reasons why we can't do something and it's so easy like i i realized for years that's what i was doing with all the social medias and stuff i thought I, geez i could write a thousand reasons why this was a stupid idea i you know take the whole thing down nobody should be on it but but, but actually what happens if we reach one person you know uh, I, I'm going to reach out and, and maybe my next interview is going to be with someone who was reached because of a post that he saw that changed him, that led him to a video that he did something and suddenly everything changed and his, his story is on 3000 stories. Mm -hmm. And, and it's like, so actually the opportunities there, if you, if you, if you focus too much on the limitation because you're diminished then that's all you'll see and your box gets smaller and smaller the itty bitty living space becomes more serious so as we find our breath find found our our power our glutes our ninja butt squeeze we actually the point of focus becomes easier to find the opportunity find the 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 sunshine find the what's possible and and, and, and that's what we got to have the privilege of witnessing. And, you know, by the time we'd left, he'd already taken about three or four actions to put things in place. Mm -hmm. By the time we'd finished the four days of teaching after that, didn't you say he'd already booked three jobs plus some of the guys we met outside that were so yes. damn scary? He'd hired a them. Job. They had jobs. It's like, jobs. you know, because... because yeah. He had a moving company before and he and, and he got stuck in reasons why he couldn't and when we found a way to find the objections and then deal with them then the body goes oh well, i can do this and yeah when we when we come across someone in overwhelm the the quick fix is often to solve try to solve their overwhelm when the reality is when you come across somebody in overwhelm you start asking questions and by about the fifth why or how or what do you think or what do you need they will solve their overwhelm which is so much more powerful 
and now I'm goose bumping. That thank bless you. That was beautiful. That that's the the other thing that comes to mind is specifically the part of the solution for Milwaukee with our segregation um, is stepping in and observing what's going on rather than judging what's going on. And there is such a, I, I think, such a huge part of our division, whether it's race or whether it's politics or whether it's, you know, you name it, it is, we are judging and that is not what we're here on this planet to do. We are here to observe and connect. And um, observe and understand. Yes, because, which requires some humility because which, you don't have all the answers. Which, which means it's what we do with when we talk to people. It's what we do when we work with the tissue. Meet the tissue where it's at, which means yeah. you've got to go find where it's at to understand it. You can't sit on the outside and go, when I... When I do a, my distance touch, this is what I think I feel. No, right. you come in here and tell me what you feel. From here, just observe. And, and, and all you can then do is tell me what you see. Can't tell me what my motivation is. Come in here and go, oh, this is what I can feel in the tissue. When I come and have a conversation, do I actually know you or have I just told you what I think? And, and you know, and, and, and it's, it's not easy. Because if I'm in a survival state, it's very hard, fight, flight, freeze, very, very hard to come in and meet because the, the, you know, the fight would be, I'm just going to smash you. <laughs> the, the flight is, I'm not going to even be here. And the freeze is, I'm just going to be very, very quiet and hope you don't see me. <laughs> you know, this is called the invisible hand, formerly known as Pete. <laughs> Um, you know, I, I often say it with the leaders that we work with and that are getting activated for the first time, the conversation often comes to, um, I truly believe that the most powerful people on this planet are breathing, they're belly breathing, they're, they have a diaphragmatic breath, a parasympathetic breath, because power is not, you know, fighting, power is not manipulating, power is knowing and understanding and diffusing a potential fight without anybody picking up a weapon. That's the man or woman that I wanna have on my side that comes into a leadership role and goes, all right, everybody, let's, uh, I'm taking a breath right now and let's connect. <laughs> well, 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 you know, the, the way I've always seen my definition, my head of power is, is power is the ability to act. That's the scientific mm -hmm. definition, yes. the ability to mm -hmm. act. What we add to that is not the need to act. Mm -hmm. So you, it's the, as you say, it's the knowing, you know, it, 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 it's that, that I still have the strength that if I needed to physically confront you, I can do that. But the fact that I know that should mean that I don't have to. Yes. And that, and, and there's the power. The power is in the choice of knowing you can, but you don't have to. But if you have to, then you have no power. Then, then, it, then it's, and in, it's a response that's being driven by your physiology. So you, you have no control. There's no power in yeah. that. There's big and mean and scary for sure, but there's no power. You know what? Um, Uh, Gandhi, when you know this this tiny little man who goes and sits on the ground before tanks and they stop, you know, not oh I'm going to be stronger than the tank. I like you look at like someone like Mother Teresa, what a tiny, frail, powerful human being. You know, it, it, it it's like. Somehow we we think that the power is in our biceps and our big, you know, all of that. It's it 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 it's it's something else, and it, it is you know, power power is maybe the ability to do something different to to what everyone else is doing when everyone else is going in a direction that doesn't serve 
us, society, social, you know, that, that social responsibility, because the, the thing that, that I've always found quite an important thing is the, the crowd psychology. So the, the, the rule of the game is if you're getting attacked, hope there's only one other person walking past. Why? Because they will intervene. Because they're the only person, which means 100% responsibility of they choose, I come, came and help or I walked away. If there are five people, well, there's each, each one could point to the other goes, well, you do it. No, you do it. And they all walk away. A hundred people, they'll be walking around you. And, 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 and this sounds so ridiculous. People go, no, you, that wouldn't happen. Go, please go check it out. This is, this is our, crowd, uh, our crowd psychology. Somehow, when, or herd mentality, when we get into this, we stop thinking. So we just start doing what everybody else is doing. And perhaps a leader is somebody who doesn't, is the person who stops and says, actually, this direction is not right. This, this thing is not right. Doesn't mean we have to go fight, but we do have to notice. We do have to bring an awareness and do things differently. And so if we are in our training, in our conversations, helping people drop into their physiology where they notice more, they see more, they have enough sense of themselves that they can stop and they can separate themselves from the crowd because you know tony robbins talks about the six human needs and the, there's the need to belong there's your crowd but there's the need for significance and they're constantly in this backwards forwards battle but the thing is that if you if you can you can have a deep sense of belonging with a deep sense of individual significance if you can find yourself as an individual in your own body. That sounds quite cryptic. I, I'm just trying to, someone we're watching, they're going, what did he just say? I don't know. He doesn't repeat because he doesn't listen to what he says. <laughs> but I know it was cryptic. <laughs> but, but it's like, you know, there, 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 is it, there, there is a simple thing of I can activate and I can feel better in myself. But to understand that when you're better in yourself, you take the better version of yourself. Just let's say um, I woke up this morning and if I gave myself a, how nice am I to the world? I'm a four out of 10. I have my coffee. It was bad coffee. Dave Asprey says there was something wrong with it because it wasn't bulletproof coffee. So I went to a three out of 10. Sorry, Dave. I always needed to do that. Um, he picked a fight with me in LA and I'd only, and I just stepped off a plane. It was weird. Um, he won't remember. <laughs> it was weird. That's another story. That's another story. It was weird. I, I don't know. I, I feel like I needed to bring that up today. Um, <laughs> um, but, uh, uh, but then you activate and you, and you slow yourself down. You take yourself inside. And when you walk out your front door, you're a six. And, and, and now you bring a, a happier version of yourself to the world you have impact because you are going to influence and impact the people around you. You're going to drive nicer on the road. You're going to be more attentive, more caring, more polite. No, no, you first, off you go. The three out of 10, grouchy bastard. <clears throat> Hurry the hell up. You know, it's, it's, I, I can almost see that um, Jeff Dunham, you know, Jeff Dunham with all of his puppets, Oh, no, you guys go look up Jeff Dunham with Ahmad, the dead terrorist and, and all the, and, and Walter. Walter oh, now Kennedy. that you said, yeah. now I know Jeff Dunham. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> so Walter would be like a two out of 10 on the grumpiness scale, you know? Right. And so, so it's like, so just doing that. So, so I feel better on myself. Yes, you impact and influence the environment around you, the people and places you go to and you meet, you impact them just by doing that. So when we go, there's nothing I can do. Well, actually there is, but take care of you first. That's what we mean. So if yeah. you just a, just go up from a four to a six, woohoo! you're a better version of you in the world. And, and, and maybe that better version of you impacts on somebody else who then takes a better version of themselves into their world. Yeah. This is where we have control, our own physiology. And, 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 the, and, thing is, and, and the control is not 
I am going to do this and I'm going to make sure I go out and influence 100 people today. Well, no, nope, because that's not it. You've got to do it and you've got to let go. You've got to let it happen. Um, you know, a story from, I think I met you maybe six years ago, maybe somewhere along those lines is when I first was introduced up in uh, Minnesota. Yeah. And you, you did something, um, uh, my ego is large enough that I would suggest you did something in that course for me <laughs> specifically that had a huge impact. So I came to that course not understanding what activation was. I was like, you know, <laughs> Cal was explaining it and I'm going, dude, I got no clue what you just said, but I'm curious, you know, there's the curiosity, <laughs> right? But I, I came completely for physiological reasons. I'm a strength coach. I wanted to improve people's physiology. Yeah. And, and we can do and, that easy peasy. And we can do that. But about two hours into the course, the aha moment for me was, my goodness, this is definitely about physiology. But if I can bring a parasympathetic expression of life and help people and facilitate them finding that in their body, we're just taking leaders that, and Milwaukee is going to be a better place when we can gradually touch the people that we touch and create a more parasympathetic expression. We're going to have this is what got me excited. And then about 18 hours into listening to you talk, <laughs> which was the oh, first so I was day. just getting started, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you were just getting started. But the fascinating thing that you did, we had a brief conversation about one of my children that um, my heart was just a little bit heavy knowing how spectacular this child is and how small they were playing. And this is probably not that different for a lot of moms and dads. They see, I see greatness. I don't get fixated on the, the mess ups what defines you is how awesome you can be when you're awesome. That's you, right? And let's be more awesome. So we had some of that discussion and then you did something for me. I can remember the guy's name. His name was Rob, I believe. It was the classic Doug training. Um, hey, who do we want to do the ankle or in this instance, the shoulder with? And Chris and Cal said, um, uh, get Rob up there. So we gather around, Doug shows us, you know, the points on the shoulder. And then we do what we always do, which is Rob, get up and, you know, tell us how you feel. You, what do you observe? And Rob was walking around and you said, you know, go stand back where you were. And I looked over at Rob and Rob's expressing, you know, I feel like I own my space. Like I am, I, I feel like I really own the space. And I looked at Rob who was standing next to one of the people I came with who's my height, six feet, six one. And I looked at Rob and then I looked at you. I, can I ask a question? And you said, sure. Uh, Rob, how tall are you? And he said, I'm a six eight. And I'm telling you, I was with a group of 24 people for 18 hours and I didn't see the six foot eight dude in the room because he was that imploded yeah. and at that not, point not i was like he was so imploded he was like this but energetically his he, he was always six eight or six six with a bit of collapse but but his him in the space was non-existent yes and, and so there, there's a combination he came online and it's like wow there's a i see you I was probably in that process as well, right? Being more observant, not, you know, and all these things are happening. But I was like, you know, when someone walks into a relationship, when someone walks into a boardroom, when someone walks onto a field of athletic competition, if they show up and if we all do that, now that's a game. Now that's, that's a, a relationship. Yeah. That's a marriage. That's whatever. That's a hundred percent of both. I'm here. I'm not, I'm not shrinking. Oh, time to start God. playing now. Yeah. Yeah. Sweet. So yeah, that was good. Yeah. I remember that. 
I, it, it, when, when people stand up and, and, and own that space, there is something magnificent about it. And, mm -hmm. and, and the thing is that, yeah, I, I think, I, I think in order to, to, to lead, you need to be seen. And we do have yeah. silent leaders, but they're not invisible. 